I just the races say? How did you figure the bird? Uh, I just mean, make a negative pattern with <laughs> These are the ages. No, I, I just removed the ages. Oh, after I think you the email, there's some because, for example, if I have a pillar, I just have a pillar, then I just deposit the chrome on it, and then I just remove the ages cube, then the chrome is remaining. This is part that on to the ages cube. Oh. oh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Murad Lubic. I'm a, a research assistant professor at the Gradient Program in Acoustics. And today we are welcoming Dr. Limbo Chow, who is an assistant professor at the Bradley Department of Computer Engineering at Virginia Tech. Uh, and he will be giving us a uh, talk on this uh, CAB seminar. Uh, so before uh, he joined Virginia Tech, uh, Dr. Chow was a postdoc. A postdoctoral fellow in the John A. Paulson School of Engineering and Applied Science at Harvard University. He received his PhD in Engineering Science in 2019 and MS in Applied Physics in 2016 from Harvard University. Before that, he received his BS in Microelectronics in 2014 from Peking University. Uh, his current research centers include the uh, integrated acoustic and acousto optic circuits on the Light to Nivab platform and diamond color centers. Uh, welcome, Dr. Shaw, and uh, we're going to listen to you. Yeah. Thank you for the introduction. So, my talk today will be integrated acoustic wave circuits using the Dissenagin platform. So, Let's start about look at the market. I haven't done this since my first time inviting motivated people of the talk by the market size of this research topic. So the thing we are interested in is the acoustic wave microwave signal processing. Basically, you are using the microwave frequency, for example, a few gigahertz acoustic wave or the mechanical waves to perform the signal processing. Actually, this type of device is uh, widely used. Everyone is using it. Like, for example, on average, a cell phone, it has about 15 of those acoustic wave devices for the signal processing from the filtering or the oscillating oscillators or the resonators and all the transducers. So now they are, each component is going to have this, the several million wide and Mounted on your previous circuit board inside of the And what's the application? Why we need those things? So, many up for the telecommunication. You know, telecommunication you now use the microwave signals, which is broadband and has a different frequency and also has different like communicating channels. So, to be able to build out one specific channels, we need to find good. Microwave filters, that's how the biggest application of this acoustical device. Uh, additional to this, you can find these acoustic wave devices in the automobile, custom the electronics that's all around. They use this acoustic device. Once it's how much is the market, right? Market decides 
Why does it say interesting? Well, do you have the life for the future? Actually, the market size you can look at is uh, it's a pretty decent market. It's about four billion a year market with the more than 30 billion of devices. Basically, you, you know how much cell phones to sell, you want to buy how much device per cell phone you get these numbers. But also, there are other industries using this type of device. And the good thing is, if you look at historical data, the market has kept growing because the uh, 5G or even next generation technologies are being used, and also more sensors that are being integrated in our products. These are good like leading industries. Those are all very large companies uh, nowadays. So, and we see this is what we have nowadays, and what's the issue, and where is our opportunities. So, there are several challenges for the current device. One is, as you know, going to the 5G or even beyond telecommunication, the frequency of the signal, like the signal we are using, gets higher and higher. It will be over 10 gigahertz. And conventional acoustic devices actually uh, become very challenging to be fabricated, to be designed at such high frequency. That's one thing. The other thing is, as I shown you in the previous slides, conventional device, they have single device, you can buy it and you need to cancel it on a single cell phone. So they are discrete and passive components. You cannot tune them. If you need 10 channels or 10 countries in the world has 10 frequency for the cell phone, you need to buy counter. That's the issue. And what's the opportunity? What we can do is we can make it integrated, which means previously is discrete passive components. Now we try to make it integrated on a single chip. So this is nice. Think about this is like what happened in the 1940s to 1960s when we switch from the for the computing, when we switch from all the like transistors, discrete mounting on a large board to integrate the circuits. The same thing I think are happening for this acoustic wave domain signal processing. We are from a single device to integrated circuits. That's the thing. That's the first thing. The second thing is about active and tunable device. Now we think about the scenario like that we need 10 filters or 10 communication band, but what about now we can make the filter tune? We don't need 10, we can use one, but it can be tuned to where we want. That's uh, the uh, direction it can be used. So we can make tunable filters or even more, we can say it's reconfigurable or programmable even on the same circuit. That's it. So if this give a little bit of vision, like this is what I imagine for the future of integrated acoustic wave signal processing. You can see here there are several components. First, this is acoustic domain for sure. You should be able to interface with the microwave domain. All the antennas are the same, probably are still in the electromagnetic domain. So we need a good interface. And because it's integrated circuits, we also need the waveguards. You want to make multiple components on a single chip, you need to connect them together. The way to connect it is those waveguides is illustrated in these uh, six blue lines in this device. And the second thing we're talking about is the modulators. So while we have a signal, we want to, how to control it, you need to be modulate, control its phase, amplitude, or um, phase or the amplitude or even a lot of frequency of the signal. So we need to build the modulators for this on chip propagating acoustic waves. And so one thing, the, also the IQ resonators. So we need to keep the same uh, performance. Like you can integrate everything, but their performance of the device is much worse than those discrete devices. No one will use it. So we need to make very high Q components to keep its performance. The last thing is, uh, I mentioned about interface. There are several types of interface. Uh, the first one is to the microwave domain, but if you want to do some long haul communications or even to the quantum systems, you want interface between the acoustic waves to the 
uh, optical light as well. Okay, this is like the big vision of the acoustic signal processing I have. Now let's look a little bit into the material platform uh, we are using. So the material we are using is called the DSM Nilovich. It's actually the if you were chemical formula, it's the same as my first name. I don't know what my parents were. It. <laughs> yeah, it is a so this is the atomic structure of this uh, material. So why this material is interesting? So first, you know, from the material side, it's of the three M point group, which means it is non-central symmetric. Which means if if you inverse the the, um, the crystal positions, it's not uh, does not have the inversion symmetry. Such crystals we learn from the material science is it what has the second order nonlinear coefficient. For example, the electro optics or the piezoelectric electricity, all those type of things require certain like uh, structure or the symmetry or the asymmetry of the crystal. It's the same. And that this is what it, this now is. The same thing is why we use this now bit, right? It's not only because my name is showing up there, I shouldn't use it, but, but actually the more important thing is it's like a good performance. So here are several material performance uh, compared to the other materials we use uh, in this acoustic device. So several consideration. One is the availability in the wafer scale of single crystal thinking. Right? You want to make something to have a large market and not only demonstrate in your own lab with like millions of money, but also be able to one day it can go to the foundry and make billions of these devices to the market. So first we need the wafer scale sync films, which is available for this and bit thanks to a company named Nano LN uh, in the last few years. The second thing is nanofabrication technologies. So a lot of other materials not coming here has very good material properties, but it's very hard to be nanofabricated. Basically means you cannot make devices, you just stay at the material scientist level, right? Um, yeah, for sure. But this is now it is the one we, we now, now only until very recently, we now know how to make very smooth side walls and pattern it very well. The next thing is the low propagation mass. High mass is bad, everyone wants low mass. So this now is it's relatively low mass in both optical domain and the mechanical domain and also the And the other thing is the scrub piezoelectric actor coupling. You want to make transducers. So this piezoelectric coupling is important for the data now. It is strong. You can see here, so compare the number, the piezoelectric coefficient of this now bit is almost one order of magnitude larger than the other materials. And for sure, uh, if we stand the same from just acoustic device to other domains, you want it to be possible to integrate with other components such as optical device or even uh, some superconducting qubits. Yeah, with all these things, I want to convey to you that this lab is a good material, but for now, as we are open, we're also expecting if someone bring us even better materials, we will change the material platform. It's not the only thing we stick to at this moment, but if something better, we'll switch. Okay, now let's look a little bit deep inside of what we are trying to do. First thing I want to discuss is about the acoustic waveguides. So I think you guys are probably very familiar with the survey acoustic wave, but for, for the people who are not read familiar with, what is the acoustic wave is type of the mechanical uh, waves that propagates only at the surface of the material. So people may ask why there are such kind of waves. The short answer is you can imagine the surface without the top bonding to the other material, it's usually become more softer. And the one is softer, it can support the mold. It's like isolated from the bottom of it. It's, it's usually features lower 
uh, base velocity of the crystals they do exist. And here are some, and how fast are those uh, self-acoustic waves? So typical number for the distant orbit, it depends on the crystal cut, but typical number is about 3.3 kilometer per second. What does it mean? It means for a two gigahertz microwave signal, two gigahertz very close to what we have for the original wide band, 2.5 gigahertz, it will have the wave mass about 1.6 micro. These numbers are so important because at this point, 1.6 micro is relatively easy or at least feasible for any nanofabrication technologies to at this scale. And two gigahertz is uh, just a typical number for microwave signals. Yeah. And for people who want to build higher frequency, another platform we explored is using the diamond. It's, it is a very hard material with very high Young's modules, so you can push the speed to 10 kilometers, and for sure you can also push the frequency of the acoustic wave devices. That's the first thing. Okay, this is about third acoustic wave. Now we talk about how we guide the self-acoustic wave on, on, the, on the surface. There are several ways, basically similar to the optical waveguides, you need some contract or the contract of refractive index. Same thing happened. The first way is to make anonic crystals. You can make artificial uh, bands, uh, band gaps of the, those crystals and thus the acoustic wave will be confined to the middle part. We can also make rib wave types, like the one showing here. You add to certain like rib structures, and that way you can also confine acoustic waves. But there are third way where the I'm approaching is to use a smart wave guides. So like this, you have this now the subject, you put something with higher uh, uh, with higher Young's modulus. Then the acoustic waves can actually be confined within this slot. Here are several advantages: is this waveguide actually exposes very less to the edge, the boundaries, so they are suffering less from the all the roughness due to the nanofabrication. The other thing is, by this way, the mode is mainly confined in the this and now it. So if you want to take advantage of the this and now with material properties, you want the acoustic mode to be confined in the material you want to utilize. Okay. This is how things go. Then we do make some uh, waveguide structure and characterize its properties. So we make one like this, this is the large chip we made. The printed circuit board, this and this and now the chip we made, and the lines on the top are actually the waveguides. And also with the moderators, I will get some moderators later. You say that's the wave guys we made. And this is the uh, SEM. So this wave guy is uh, excited that this wave at about 2.5 gigahertz. And we, we measure the mass about 17 dB per centimeter. <coughs> this might be considered good in large because if you want centimeters, it goes to only like you may have about uh, three percent left energy left, but if you consider the quality factor of this device, it's actually not too bad. It's like ten to the four. It's actually larger compared to the uh, a lot of mechanical device uh, microwave components like LC resonator. Usually they have few factors about only ten at maximum a hundred. So this is actually high Q device and. And we are also wondering where, where is the most heat, where is the uh, mechanism of this acoustic loss. So actually, we, we get the conclusion, this is, this loss are actually dominated by the interaction with the thermal band, basically the thermally excited phonons at room temperature. So how we know that is uh, we put this device into this file set, which can have the uh, it's subjective one is down to the temperature only of 0.9 Kelvin, but we have another one of our map can go 10 million Kelvin. And with the temperature cooling down of our device from room temperature at 300 K to the uh, one Kelvin, we can see the acoustic loss actually gets uh, eliminated. 
and at this one Kelvin, uh, what we measure is less than 0.5 GB per centimeter. And we're actually not very sure that 0.5 GB, that's just uh, due to the uh, measurements we're doing. We're not making cavity here, we're just making two acoustic devices with different ends. So to and compare the propagation loss between. So that's a conclusion we get. It's, it's a pretty good one because it's, it's very performance, pretty good. And this is the same how we verify these acoustic waves. The second question is like how we control those acoustic. Once you have seen guided, you want to control it to become <laughs> useful devices. So the modulating acoustic waves. There are several ways. So the first way we employ is the use the actual acoustic effect, or sometimes uh, I know you got my Imagine as the third order piezoelectric effect. So, what is that? This is not a new effect we invented, it is being studied uh, uh, more than about maybe almost 35 years ago. Which it says is for the certain material, if you apply the electric field of the material, it's electric elastic, electricity, but the electric constant of the material will change. When the elastic change or the Young's modulus of a material change, we can imagine it's the phase velocity or how fast the acoustic wave propagates will also change accordingly. <clears throat> right. It's the same. And to have that effect, we do require the material to be non sectional symmetric, which this number is. So if you're saying about silicon, it's a central symmetric material, it won't have this effect. That's something we learned. And and as I said, you might be wondering, this thing has been studied 35 years ago. Why I talk today, right? Why it becomes interesting again? The answer is if you compare the early devices, you can think about the 1980s, people making those very large bulk devices where people applied hundreds of voltages on these materials. And the use of acoustic wave is actually very low frequency at 10 megahertz, limited by the electronic at that time. And you can only, oh, this is a format issue, you can only achieve 10 to the minus four phase change. This is a very small phase change, right? No one of us thinks this type of device becomes useful because we can change too much. But nowadays, we do something different. <clears throat> As I shown before, we make the waveguide and make it with put the young electrodes exactly at the two, like besides this acoustic waveguide. And in that way, what we improve, so first is by the same bulk device, this gap will be at this millimeter, but here it's about 10 micron. So in that way, we can enhance the electric field over 200 times. So what's important is not about the how much voltage you apply, but it is the amount of the electrical field you generate. It is the voltage divided by the distance. So the closer we put the two electrodes, the strong electrical field we can generate. That's the first thing. To order magnitude, second thing is about acoustic wavelengths. So previously we had 10 megahertz. Now we can add two high gigahertz which is over like 20 times smaller. And if the wavelength is smaller, it has the high phase change and how many periods it also gets uh, short, so it's improved. So by taking those two together or we have the efficiency improvements over like three all of magnitude. If you put like 10 to the minus four <coughs> times these three all of magnitude improvements, it's very close to one. That becomes something we can make it useful. The first thing we demonstrate to use this electrical acoustic modulation concept is the phase modulation. So, what we want to do here is uh, we make a acoustic wave flight, put the electrodes down, and we apply voltage. Then we can control the phase of the acoustic wave as the output. So, uh, this is a device, and this is the scan actually. Uh, helped by uh, my collaborator at the UT Austin, like Professor Kurtzi and I, may do this scan is, while we don't have any electrical field applied on this electrode, 
we get to the face scanning by the AF and scan of the acoustic wave phase, showing in the upper figure. But if we apply some EC electrical field, we can see the face get totally shifted. So it can have the phase change. So this is in the spatial domain clear show. And if we apply some large enough sine wave to this actual as an output, output with matrix phase, we can achieve high phase shift. Basically, if for a, if for a single pound signal, you can achieve high phase shift, you can get every uh, every phase you want. It's, it's okay. <clears throat> Because it's plus minus pi, yeah. get everything you want. And this is phase modulation. And it is actually relatively easy to put phase modulation into the amplitude modulation by the by the structure we call it Maxander interferometer. So the way it worked is uh, it was separated into two paths. And the two paths, if you notice, the direction of the electrical field is actually in the opposite direction. Right. If you apply the voltage in the middle, the upper uh, pass will get, for example, a negative uh, in, in Y field, and the lower pass get positive. In that way, they get the phase change they get through the two paths in opposite. So when you merge them together, the interference happens. And by control the phase difference between two paths uh, by the voltage, we can uh, we can control the output amplitude of these uh, uh, crystal waves like this. So no bias, same phase, it's maximum output. With some voltage, you get the middle. And for sure, you can apply some sine waves and it will lower for the amplitude modulation. This is the same. And do we have anything more interesting by this phase moderator? The other thing is we can do frequency shifting. The way we do is called the sterodyne frequency shifting. If we apply a continuous phase change but have a jump of two pi, always do that. Like your phase will change linearly over the time, and the consequence is it will actually perform a frequency shifting of your uh, original signal. And by doing that, we can actually see that we achieve the frequency shifting of the original signal to uh, one kilohertz offset with the efficiency over 90% and with such like terror suppression ratio over 20 dB. You may wonder why we have all these sideband generators. This is because no one can generate that perfect like, jumping back scope, right? This is just limited by the bandwidth of our signal generator. This is the same. And is there any more things interesting? One thing very interesting is have some non reciprocal effect. So the way we generate can, this thing can be used for non reciprocal transmission is we use it in propagation. We separate it into three electrodes and we apply signals with different phase on these three electrodes. And by doing so, we can have the acoustic wave coming in forward, see the same phase, so everything accumulated up. But wave coming in the back, it will cancel up. Here's a like, tattoo. If we have uh, forward propagating, you can see the phase change will be accumulated. So at output, you will observe a phase shift of signal. But now, if the light coming from the reverse way, uh, the opposite way coming from the reverse way, it will generate some phase shift. But overall, you will find everything canceled out if they took subsidiary to high phase shift. So by that way, the acoustic wave propagating in the reverse direction will not be modulated. That's how we achieve the non-reciprocal modulation of the acoustic wave. So here are some, if you look at the period, how it works, and here are some measurements. The blue lines shows the model acoustic wave propagating in the forward direction. It's being clearly modulated. <laughs> And in the backward direction, it is not 
being motivated at all. And if you, that's what in the time domain, if you already look at uh, how we can change the phase difference between the each electrode, then we can be considerable for sure. If you change the phase relationship between the electrodes, you can program which direction you want to modulate it or do the, do the reverse way. And by comparing the sideband signal, we can uh, define the non reciprocal city, which here is uh, over 40 dB, which are pretty decent number. Although this is not for the isolation yet, this is just for the non reciprocal city. Yeah. This is uh, things about the actual optical modulation. And now we talk about another way to uh, control this acoustic wave uh, on chip is using the thermal effect. So thermal effect, thermal, like thermal acoustic effect, actually you, take, like, you can imagine when you heat it up, a material, the elasticity or the Yoss modulus of the material will change accordingly. So for this and now bit, uh, this can be a very efficient way to control the acoustic wave. This is how it, uh, the, like the, like the phase, uh, phase velocity changes versus its uh, temperature. It's about almost 100 ppm uh, part per million per, per degree. What does it mean is if I have a phase wave at one gigahertz, if I change the temperature by locally, by a heater by 10 degrees, I only need a mass of 2.3 millimeter wave height to achieve a high phase shift. That's it. That's for the 10 degree, but the real reasonably we can heat it up locally the temperature over 100 degrees. In that case, we can achieve a full high phase shift by using only 230 microns of the device. And the device is not that we actually make it. That is our cross section. The waveguide you guys already familiar with, and we put a heater made of the nickel chromium uh, uh, metal. And this is our heater. This is how it looks like on the SEM. And we apply some voltage on this heater to heat up the waveguide locally. And this is how everything works. If we, we can tune the, we actually apply it for like over, over four pi phase shift using this uh, 500 micro acoustic wave time. And we can see here is, this is the S parameter at the two part. By I turn the heater on off, the amplitude does not change. So it's like this thing. It's not an amplitude modulation. It's, it's a phase modulation. So the amplitude does not change. But you can see the microwave phase gets like uh, shifted by almost 90 degrees to the heat on of, of only 50 megawatt. Yeah. So this thing is actually very useful for like uh, uh, microwave signal processing. One, you need something to be very stable. So usually those thermal effects are relatively stable, then you have to control the uh, approaches. This is the second topic um, and shown here is about the how we modulate those acoustic waves on chip. The next topic I want to discuss is uh, the acoustic optic interface. So why we are interested in acoustic optic interface or, or more broadly, why we are interested in the uh, conversion between the microwave domain and the optic domain? The, the, my argument is for it. First, local computers, whatever classical you are using nowadays, or the quantum computers, they are all operating at gigahertz frequency. Few gigahertz, when you buy a CPU, you know this number uh, for local, uh, local signal processing or computing. But for non core communication, we cannot use those like electrical signals, they, they are too noisy. So we, we use optical fibers for normal communication. Then here's the question, how we link them together, right? You want to be on a single internet. So that's why we find the link between the microwave and optical domain as so important, especially that's a, that's a one thing. The other things that they 
the link between the microwave and optical domain has had other applications, including for sure, this is microwave to optical transducers. We can also make the microwave spectrometry using the uh, optical approach to do the microwave spectrometry. Or we can use certain like computing units such as the uh, convolution calculator for machine learning or neural net. There's some other application. So briefly introduce how we make this thing together is uh, we link this optical domain and a physical domain by co-design the structure that is both support acoustic uh, waves and also optical light. So the way we do it is like this. The line is among those waveguides showing here are actually optical waveguides. And each one of these are optical waveguides. Optical light can actually propagate it through as well. If you're looking in the vertical direction, those structures actually forms a uh, acoustic crystal or the phononic crystal. So they can support uh, acoustic, acoustic waves, or if we make some band structure engineering, we can make a very high Q cavities in the middle to enhance the interaction between the acoustic domain and the uh, optical light. Between the acoustic and optics. Yeah. And for sure, we, use, we put down those uh, IDT or interstitial transducers to transduce the energy from the microwave to the acoustic. Yeah. So, looking a little bit inside how these things work is, as I mentioned, there's the optical mode. This is optical TV mode, can be supported by this structure. Well, we have a lot of, we have several possibilities of the acoustic modes can be supported by the structure. But what we are interested in is actually the last one, the mouth type, or someone called it the share wave type mode. Why this is interesting is because the figure here is showing the optical index, the change of optical index induced by the acoustic wave or induced by the string. And, so, and you have the different things to maximum this interaction. You want a good overlap between this induced index change with the optical. If the new model thinks is the overall acoustic optic modulation or acoustic optic interaction is well equals to the what the optical mode looks like multiplied by what's the optical index change induced by this. Um, uh, by the string field of the acoustic mode. So, and by properly design those two things, we can make this in, uh, interaction very efficient. So, the figure shown here in the figure B here is we can show we have a, a relatively good Q factor of the acoustic mode at the frequency we want by the S11 because it's showing a and the red lines actually is indicates the transduction uh, from the acoustic domain to the optical domain. And we can see it is getting enhanced by almost 10 dB at the resonance frequency. And this is one thing. The second thing is usually we characterize how efficiency the modulation is by seeing how many sideband it can generate. And by this uh, have acoustic cavity enhanced. Modulation, we can say we can generate up to like nice sidebands, which indicates it's over several B pi of the modulation we can achieve. And I have want to mention that those kind of the equally spaced uh, frequency form, this is in actually also in the optical domain. It's called the optical frequency forms, are actually very useful in the optical spectroscopy in detection like chemicals and other stuff. So that's all about how the classical, let's think about what's the next, what's beyond the classical thing. And when I think about this, I find a very interesting photo recently by the Joe Biden and the CEO of the IBM. What's it? This is something they call downloading bridge. And this is for the quantum computer that's built by the IBM. 
it's the same. And I think uh, so. You think the quantum will be the future or the any other things to see how acoustic waves devices also be effective for the quantum? Yeah. So this is actually one slide I use for graduate students. I told me to them, look at those old guys, how much they know about quantum. We definitely need people like us, be more professional, more passionate, and much younger. And uh, yes, myself and my math base in the lab. <laughs> who, who is the future? Right? Yeah, usually in the recruiting one, I also put out all of that for the you like, to recruit. You can be here. Yeah, so what I will get into how this acoustic device can be helpful in the uh, quantum systems. So there are several things we can do. This is the vision I have. We can use these acoustic wave devices or acoustic circuits I mentioned as a quantum on-chip quantum internet. What does it mean? It means these acoustic devices can actually have a good interaction with all different types of quantum systems we're using nowadays. For example, circular qubits, those solid state defects, or the optical cavities. A lot of things can be connected together by this acoustic uh, circuits on chip. That's the one thing. The second thing is, as I mentioned before, this acoustic device can be a very good uh, transduction for the single phonon state transducers. Then we can generate single phonon states, or we can even generate uh, entangled phonon pairs. The same. And also, if you want to hybrid the superconducting qubits with the our acoustic device, it's possible to make quantum gates out of it. So that's, a, that's just a big vision. And let's see how much people haven't been done. There's a lot of things actually have been done nowadays. For example, we can use acoustic wave, uh, acoustic wave to control the light. The light can be classical light or even quantum light, both works to make some isolation or asymmetric uh, propagation. Oh, we can make very good lasers by these acoustic cavities uh, and by those very narrow bandwidth lasers to like sub hertz bandwidth lasers, which are very useful in, in quantum application. People also couple these uh, acoustic cavities to the superconducting qubits to, uh, to form some hybrid systems. It's the same, and 2D material. Acoustic waves can change the band structure of these two D materials by by string, and that's the same. Also, the one I also work with is with these diamond color centers. Those are quantum defect in solid by using the string field or the string waves. You can uh, drive them, drive their like spin state, for example. The other thing is, how about is the uh, uh, very efficient single level single photon level transduction between the acoustic or the local like microwave domain to the optical photons. Yeah. So this is everything to you. Then I want to mention, I know I discussed our the mass of the our device at low temperature, but uh, also the, the modulation. Does the modulation only works at room temperature? If you ask for the thermal approach, yeah, probably. At low temperature, you cannot apply a heater to heat up, right? Otherwise, it won't work. But luckily, our electro acoustic approaches, as I mentioned, do work very well at low temperature. This is what we do because at low temperature, the signal is so small, so we can only measure the side band powers. So, this is like at the level of the, on the same time, on the wavelengths. The, the this this there one funnel on the wavelength this still modulation still happens. The other important things for the for the quantum application is its noise. Does our modulation add on more noise? If it's very noisy, it's, it's useless. Then we measure compare the noise level. So uh, so the you can see the noise level is about sixty four quantum per second hertz. So this is mainly due to our readout circuits of our quantum system. 
And if you compare the numbers between no input, everything's no, just the system output, and you compare it only with sending the acoustic waves, or we change the modulation on and off. You can, you can conclude here there's no significant uh, noise being added to this system. So it's a good, it's a good modulation, it's a quantum compatible modulation. And for sure, we can also do this like frequency shifting at some low temperature with even better performance because the loss at the low temperature is much less. So that's all I'm saying. I want to finally show you is what's our my own reason to work seeing this artistic theory. We have done already done several works. Why make this slide? Okay, okay. ready done several works. We start from the how to make very good cavities on the bulk distance of it. And we also started this uh, microwave to optical conversions with these suspended structures. And later we thought, okay, how about those acoustic optic uh, modulators where the acoustic waves can modulate or bend the direction of the optic light that we have? Then later we think we need something reciprocal. Then we build those coupled acoustic cavities. Then we introduce the gain and the loss of the system and form the parity time symmetric system and enable non reciprocal. Uh, Transmission. And this one I showed is about thermal acoustic modulation. Up one is the electro acoustic modulation. And this one is about using the acoustic wave to control the spin states of the diamond power center. So, as it's a summary, so uh, what we are looking into this field, into the future, is we want the acoustic wave or microwave frequency acoustic wave devices being. Changing from single passive discrete devices to be some active integrated circuit platform. That's the thing we want to work on. To do it. The second thing is uh, we want to have the active controls of these clips. We not only guide them, we have one have a full control on them, either using the electrical approach or using the thermal approach, or then even other kind of approach could be possible. The third thing is this application of this acoustic device um, is actually a lot. It can be used a lot in the classical signal processing for telecommunication, as well as it can be very useful for quantum computing or quantum signal processing. Yeah, and for sure, this is an emerging field. There's a lot of things to be done. For example, how we can make ready, make large scale acoustic circuits. What's the fabrication and uh, we need a foundry, how it's become properly compatible. A lot of questions towards uh, large scale circuits. And the other thing is about the non linear effect. We are not utilized, uh, we are using some second order that are this the actual field or other things. But are there also other non linear effects, like non linear optics, can be used or help us to achieve several functions? Like Optics, we use second harmonic to generate single photon speed, uh, state. Can we use the same technique of nonlinearity to generate a single photon state? That will be something interesting. The other thing is about the material development. Can we, is the little bit the good one? Can we have a better one? The other things. So, all of this actually concludes my talk today. and. But then I want to thank you, and here's my group's website. I have openings for postdocs and students, right? and they're interested in contacting me. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Lee for your uh, nice presentation showed us your amazing work about acoustic, acoustic wire pad and acoustic wire guides with, um, with uh, many functionalities. So, uh, for the audience, if you have any questions, and also for the people who are in Zoom, feel free to uh, unlock your microphone and uh, ask for the questions. Yes, I have one question. Like, uh, your optical designs, you have uh, your uh, side walls of the wafers is not like particle. Is there any reason for that? Oh, this is actually due to the limitation of the nano fabrication. So when you etch down those things, uh, so it's hard to be vertical because 
And this knob is very hard to be etched by any chemical reactions. So what it actually, it actually most of the physical, uh, like just the physical sputtering. Basically we use the ions, the atom ions, like find the energy the atom ions, we like just sputter those things material away. So it will finally reach to certain end. So what is the depth of edge in that case? Sorry? What is, uh, what is the depth of edge? Yeah. Uh, we can uh, we can actually not whatever you want, but we can up to about few microns. It's not big easy. So the, the thing is about you, you think about the edge is you make the mask first mm -hmm. right? and you edge it. This is about the selectivity between your mask and this knob. And you think that actually because it's physical edge, it's very close to one to one. So if you put on one micro mask, you probably can edge uh, one, eight, uh, yeah, one micro or be safe by like 800 oh. Yes. So I'm interested in how large is the bias voltage and the AC voltage that you do? Are they uh, acceptable by the uh, customer of the electronics industry? Yeah, so uh, there's a lot of things uh, we can talk about because So if you look at this device, right? So how how much voltage you apply is actually based on how long your moderator is. You can imagine because it's voltage. If you make the uh, moderator longer and longer, you only need this and this voltage. So the the thing of learning here, people use the, in this modulation is the B pi times L is how much voltage you apply to achieve high phase shift times the uh, how long the the mass you need. So if you use one centimeter one, I think this is about like uh, 30 volts. So it is not ideal. And uh, there are several reasons why this needs to be improved because the waveguide will make up also still relatively wide. So now it's about 30 volts. And if it's in a scientific application of 30 volts, people is acceptable. <laughs> you can tens of volts, but if you want the industry, uh, also, when you make it a filter and other things, if you make cavities or filters, this voltage required gets much less. So, yeah, for 30 volts, it's about four by like, five phase shift. Like, for example, we could do the mask if you want to make a like, two number of filters to cover the range, of, like, for example, Wi Fi, maybe it's about 200 megahertz at the 2.4 gigahertz band. You only need about like, this than five volts. So, efficiency. Okay, so thank you. But what I heard is like DC is, uh, so uh, what I, I'm familiar with like PCT material, the DC uh, voltage they are required is because they want to have a linear, right? Linear, linear uh, material properties to easier to control. So so here the DC voltage they are, you are using is not for the linear material property purpose. It's not. No, no. Okay. you are actually changing the, phase so, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. I have one more question. So you are, for the loss control, you are using the temperature to control that. Yeah, okay, that's uh, several things. So, so the temperature thing is the thermal bath, the thermal noise. It's like you can, it's like the uh, thermal noise for the actual circuits. It is, it's fundamentally there. So what we want showing here is actually, if, like us, if we probably design the, the waveguide or the structures, um, we are actually at the limit of this like thermal excitation fundamental limit. Okay, so do you can you control the loss by the geometry? Like the yeah, you can control it by the geometry. You can also, so let's say like for our case, like what we come I want to here is we already optimize the geometry to have okay. the minimum. If you don't have a good design, you will See, even much higher loss. This this possible. If you want to make it more lossy, that's easy. <laughs> but if you wanted to make it this lossy, yeah, but so PT symmetry was the dominant loss effect. Okay, but for PT symmetry, you have to have precise control loss. How do you how do you do that? Oh, this is because in the PT work, uh, we are using the external. 
So in this PD world, actually, as we share is we use the external, uh, we make some uh, I electrodes in the middle of cavity, then we couple it to some external circuits. For example, if you want tunable loss, it's pretty easy. We have tunable resistor. Okay. If it's like match 50 ohm, it's get the maximum loss on the resistor. If it's open, it's no loss. And also have the gain. And for the gain, we can do those tunable gain, this uh, circuits. Yeah, so we can ready to set the uh, control the GPU to add to the like, uh, PD signature. Any other questions? So I have several questions as well. Right? Regarding the frequency shifts, so uh, how do you control the amount of frequency shifts? Exactly, you show by like few kilohertz per liter. Go from one frequency to another, so how not continue that? This is actually defined by the small and it makes that. So, the project is called the Sterodyne. Uh, what you can imagine is why the part is that you are continuously changing its phase, right? Mm -hmm. You can say about that you realize. So the big now, let's say just sine wave, we have the F uh, to pi F T, or uh, this is what have, we have originally, but you want pi some pi a phase with T, right? This is like, if this equals to like the K, it's basically the slope, and times T, then you can think about your new frequency, like the shifted frequency, will be equal to the two pi f naught, let's call it f naught plus this k right here. So by how fast uh, you tune its phase, you can determine how fast, uh, how much frequency. One thing is about the thermal actuation, which is that is, so the oxygen remains the same, but then change the How about the rating frequency of that would be shifted because I expected to be shifted before because we are changing the material. Yeah, no, no. So you have uh, one thing is those wave guys, you know, we don't have any other structure. What wave guys actually bought that? Oh, so right. what's what's determining your frequency? We are not changing the frequency. Frequency is always conserved in any structure. So the frequency is actually determined by the input. Right, so yeah. I was thinking about the IDTs as well, changing the IDTs. Uh, IDTs is far away. Our first, I see IDTs. Yes, IDTs far away from. So I'm showing here. Yeah, this is about uh, 500 microns. I have DTR field uh, uh, millimeters. So no, usually not like that. Uh, about the atmosphere decoding the nature, uh, what temperature do you have during the operating of the human? Well, cryogenic, cryogenic temperature. So, you can you can do it. Okay. Uh, uh, it, both, it works uh, at both room temperature and cryogenic temperature. And probably at uh, cryogenic temperature, the performance will be better because you improve the Q factor of the atmosphere. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions, uh, we can uh, close the seminar. So thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all for being here.